how would you define that title itself, the constant choice? Well, it's it's interesting. I I, uh, I think it's so important to look at life, not in chapters of the mega events that happens. I got married. I had a kid. I got a job. I got promoted. Life is what happens between <laughs> those mega events. Every single day, we make dozens and dozens of decisions. And the constant choice is really intended to say that the ability to choose the good has to be a conscious, minute-to-minute -minute almost, uh, deliberation with oneself. Because only if you, if you carry those not only big but mundane tasks of, of everyday life with thoughtfulness and consideration towards the other. And that's the key. The key insight to joy, to happiness, to fulfillment is the ability to sort of transcend oneself and put oneself in the other's position. Whoever the other is, there's always another. I've never seen anybody happy who looked at himself and said, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to eat bonbons and drink the best wines, and boy, am I going to be happy. It doesn't work that way. Happiness and joy, I think, has been written ad nausea, only comes when you do something good for somebody else. Even at the sacrifice of something within yourself, and yet you get fulfillment and joy when you are able to help another human being. So that those kinds of choices are constant in our lives. And that's what the book is about, trying to say, if I understand where evil comes from, I can diminish it. If I know that within us lies compassion and goodness, and that there is this force of good in the universe. And I want to choose to align myself with that force on faith. Then that's the choice I, I would like to make again and again and again. And as I said, Mother Teresa maybe did it right. Uh, I'm just an average Joe human being. All I can do at this stage of my life is to try. And what made you decide to write the book? It sounds like it was a burning question, perhaps, long time based on your own background. So was it something where it culminated at a point where you said, I need to get my ideas down on paper? I think I was motivated, importantly, by two factors. Yes, it was, there was a, a, a sort of smoldering volcano within me to say, I have really come to understand this, and I want to share it. And at the same time, <clears throat> we're looking here, <clears throat> particularly in this country, at uh, the human condition sort of going awry. In my years in this wonderful country that has been so good to me, in fact, I'm here because President Eisenhower decided to help me get out of Romania. I got traded for a couple of Russian spies, or whatever. No one, there were no records kept. I have no idea who I got traded for, but I got, I got traded for somebody, and here I am. But, you know, no matter how much I, I, I have seen outside of the Romanian evil, America has always been, on balance, the country of mostly good. Yeah, there are problems, there are crime, there's this and that, there's evil in the, in the, in the world, but, and certainly here. But I always felt that the good guys were winning, that the spirit of goodness was affecting most of the citizens of this beautiful country. And in the last dozen years or so, I feel that the tide is turning the wrong way. I, f I look around what's happening in all spheres of our existence. Start with the government. 
the, the contentiousness, the acrimony, the viciousness, the lying, the cheating that exists in our government today is terrifying to me. And they are the exemplars, right? They are the leaders. They are the role models for the kids, for the next generations to learn from. This last election in the primaries were just simply awful. And, and saying, as most, most of us do, oh, that's just politics, is not good enough. I say, stop, tilt, enough. Come on, already, we have a choice to make, right? And the same thing we see in other institutions around, some religious institutions. It's not the issue with the fundamental creed and faith that they expound. But the way the institutions behave is terrifying. They turn their heads and all kinds of horrible stuff is being inflicted, particularly on the vulnerable and the defenseless. And that's not good, and yet it's acceptable, apparently. There are not people in the streets saying, this is wrong. Not only repent, change. It's not happening. You know, just a couple months ago, there was a young man from a wonderful high school in New York City, Stuyvesant High School. It's one of the finest high schools in America. Fabulous kids, they get into the best schools in the country. And he said publicly, he was quoted in the newspapers, 80% of my classmates cheat. 80% of my classmates. Not just those ones who really are desperately trying to get into a good school, or any school for that matter. No, the best and the brightest cheat because they can. And that's okay. And if you look, as I said, if you look at the institutions, if you look at government, if you look at all kinds of leaderships, the families are too busy, uh, single, single homes, there's no conversation or discussions or not enough with the kids about what's going on in the world. The world is getting to be more, much more complex than it's ever been. So all those factors putting together are conspiring to make it very difficult for the good to, f to bubble up to the top in our lives and to control our destiny. And so I say I'm just one little piece of sand trying to do my little bit. And the good news is there's lots of people like me uh, doing their bit, do, doing their thing, living their lives, writing books, making movies, writing articles. And there you are, Michael, too. That's what we're talking today. Because we share this vision, we share this concern that, you know, it's up to us. I guess, fundamentally, I have, it's not a fact, but it's a deep held belief that, you know, the way to, this, to the great city on the hill with all its promised glory, it's not going to come by some divine intervention. It's going to come through our actions. We have to get there. Our children, their children, for thousands of years, maybe, maybe longer, who knows. But it's up to us to push the ball forward so we can get there. And the only thing I know is that right now, Michael, is you and me, and the rest of us today, um, that have to work and do our part and the next generation will have to do their part, and so on and so on and so on. So, yeah, I'm a busy guy. I got lots of work to do. <laughs>